the Territory Manager for Eastern Canada. I have with me Michelle Cloutier, who is a Technical Manager. And uh, today we will be talking about Visualize. The topic, uh, the whole topic is discover the importance of photo quality visualization with SolidWorks Visualize. So if, if, if you've done any shopping recently, you may have noticed that um, and heard and done yourself, we shop differently. Everyone shops differently than they have in the past. And this has changed how companies have had to go to market, have had to market themselves and had to prepare themselves. And this is one of the reasons why visualization and quality of images has become all the more important because the first contact that people have with your product or your service is probably over the web. And if that first contact is not the best, then chances are they may not go any further and look any further into your company to discover the quality of the product that you're offering, um, but only be left with a, a less than pleasant um, memory of, of your company and, and your website if that's where they went to see. So visualization and, and photo quality renderings and realism has all become very important in today's marketplace. Uh, the other aspect behind this is that there's more competition out there, so you need to differentiate yourself, um, whether it be um, for selling your products, whether it be for selling your services, in, uh, in doing um, proposals to customers that are more than just the regular proposal, adding some, some images to it, adding some videos to it, whatever it may be so that you can differentiate yourself and, and win business and, and grow your business. So as, the, as for uh, most part, there's uh, people who are auditive, some people are visual, um, but most part when people are, are looking for products and services, the first thing that will, uh, that will snag them is the visual. Um, it's either good or it's bad, um, and that's, uh, that's where everything starts. So today's topic is on how to help you understand um, SolidWorks visualization um, and see what that can do for you. So if you have right now a license of SOLIDWORKS Professional or a license of SOLIDWORKS Premium that is on subscription, so on active subscription, you currently have access for free to a license of Visualize Standard. All right, this is included with your subscription service. It is a value add um, that SOLIDWORKS has, uh, has put in there. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, for those who are not on subscription, for those who are not on SOLIDWORKS, um, because you don't have to be on SOLIDWORKS to be using uh, products like Visualize, um, then, uh, then obviously the, uh, the, the SOLIDWORKS stand or Visualize standard can be purchased. In addition to that, there is a Visualize professional version. And Michelle is going to go through um, a lot of information today. Um, most of the time, he'll specify that in Visualize professional, so you'll know which one does which. Um, and, and which one doesn't, so uh, you'll have a better understanding between standard and visualize, um, but you can also get that from, uh, from other sources, and I'll come back to, uh, to talk to you about it uh, at the end of the presentation. So before we get into uh, the actual presentation, just going to go over a few things of logistics and how to go use GoToWebinar if this is your first time. Um, there is a, uh, a yellow or orange, sorry, arrow at the top that can close the interface so that you can see the, the screen properly. Um, you can connect by computer or by phone, whichever has the best quality or, or is the easiest for you. Um, we do have some handouts that are available, so uh, please go to the handouts section and, and download them for yourself. And then if you want to ask some questions, you're, uh, you're obviously on silent to mo mute mode today. Um, so that Michelle can go through this, uh, this uh, information. But if you do have some questions, please post them in there. And if time permits at the end, he'll go through them and otherwise we'll take them uh, offline with you. So that covers the GoToWebinar. Uh, with that, I will transfer this over to Michel Cloutier. He's been uh, a technical manager uh, at SolidWorks for over 14 years now uh, and uh, playing with a whole lot of tools. And this is one that he likes playing with because uh, it is fun, it is different. And it is very visual, which is the whole point of all this. So uh, over to you, Michelle. I'll be back at the end. All right. Well, uh, thank you, Joelle, and welcome, everyone. And uh, today, yeah, maybe a lighter topic than the uh, typical CAD or simulation stuff. We're going to talk about Visualize. And 
I want to do today. So you saw a little bit of visualize in the maybe in the intro video I just played a couple of minutes ago. Um, so I want to walk you through the process itself. You know how to get from here from this image, which is you know a screen capture of a SolidWorks model to something a lot more engaging, uh, like images like these, for example, um, you know, with with nice camera shots and, you know, even animations. Now, this animation might be a little, uh, a little bumpy over the web, uh, but, you know, I want to show you how to go through that using SolidWorks Visualize. So, Today I'm going to do five things. First of all, show you how to actually get the SolidWorks model inside of Visualize and start making it camera ready, you know, applying materials, colors, textures, things like that. Then we're going to talk about lights, uh, setting up cameras, um, things like this. Uh, we're going to talk about animation and how to bring the product to life using some animations. Um, also telling a deeper story and then use it with that topic i want to get into um you know virtual reality uh 360 type of animation uh sun studies things like that a lot of different types of engaging material that we can create using visualize and at the end look at how we get all those results out uh, also see what happens if we do update the SOLIDWORKS model how do we you know how do we update our visualized content if there's a change in SOLIDWORKS? So I'm going to go over all of this. So the first thing that I want to talk about today, how to get the model inside of Visualize, applying textures, materials, playing with colors, and, and whatnot. So I'm going to jump really quick into SOLIDWORKS just to show you the model, and then I'm going to actually go and visualize. So in SOLIDWORKS, this is what the model looks like. My, I'm going to use this little coffee maker. Now, I want to bring that into Visualize. Now, to bring that into Visualize, it's actually very easy. In Visualize, because Visualize is a different application than SOLIDWORKS and can be installed on a different computer, I'm simply going to open a project. Here's actually the list of the last projects I've been working on. Now, I'm going to create a new one. So I'm simply going to say Open. and the one thing I want to highlight here is that Visualize can actually import a vast majority of variety of file formats, over 25 different file formats. So you'll obviously see the SOLIDWORKS uh, files in there, but also neutral files, third party like Inventor, Solid Edge, Pro E. In my example, I'm using the um, Expresso Maker. I click open, and this, I'm doing this real time live. So you'll see that it comes in pretty quickly. Now, the one thing I do have control over is what do I want to import from my SOLIDWORKS assembly or part. Um, so I want to obviously the geometry. I'm going to check this option, monitor file, and I'm going to get, get back to that a little later. Uh, but I also want to bring the appearances. Now, if you have animations, camera settings, scenes, even decals set in your SOLIDWORKS, you could also bring those in. But for now, I'm simply going to bring the geometry with appearances. And fairly quickly, this actually comes up inside of Visualize. Again, I'm doing this real time. Um, now, the one thing you'll notice, first of all, is that it will read the the feature tree or the assembly tree very similar to what you have inside of SOLIDWORKS. So it's very easy to, um, if if you've designed this inside of SOLIDWORKS yourself, it's very easy to, um, to figure it out. The one thing I do notice though, as I bring it in, it seems like the um, you know the assembly is, is seems to be a little like floating in space. It's not quite set on on the floor, so I'm simply going to set that to zero. That's my y z y height. Set it up to zero. And one thing I want to start playing around is the the materials right now. So as it comes in directly from SOLIDWORKS, it will actually import the SOLIDWORKS material. So if I look at this orange side panel, you can see that selecting it, I got my color option, but now I can tweak my roughness. So if I want this to be very shiny, I set the roughness to zero and you see the reflection of the, uh, the, the coffee pods on it. Now I'm gonna tweak it actually down a little bit down to 10. 
have a, has a nice, nice brushed effect on it. And very quickly, I can simply adjust the existing materials very easily just like this. Another thing I want to adjust is maybe the color of the coffee. It doesn't look like coffee too much right now. So I'm going to actually select my cup here, simply hide it for one quick second, and then select the material here of that coffee, and then change the color to bring it to a darker tone. So very quickly, I can do this. And you'll notice that every time I do changes here, you know, it's rendering live inside of Visualize. So that's the beauty of Visualize. You always know what you're going to get because it's actually rendering, always rendering as I do some changes. Now, I want to also change, talk about some different materials. So it brought in the SOLIDWORKS material. So I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm happy with that. But I want to have some more textured materials that I don't have inside of SOLIDWORKS. Now, what's great about Visualize is that you have a huge library of appearances that you can simply drag and drop and apply on your model. So here I got a few appearances. I got a um, ultra glossy plastic. I simply drag and drop, and as I move it onto the components, I actually know exactly where this is going to be applied drag and drop. So now this is a very high gloss material. I'm still not quite happy with it. I'd like to have something more textured, like a molded uh, material. So I'm going to switch to my cloud library. So switching to the cloud library, I'm actually looking into an, an, an even bigger asset bank of appearances, and I can actually search for something mold. Um, so I got a few molded materials. And let's try this one here, drag and drop onto my part. And again, instantly I get a feel for what this is actually going to look like. So you see now the texture really much, much more pleasing, something I'm actually looking for. Now what's great about those materials is that I can actually play with, so here there's a bump, bump map to that color and texture and appearance. And I can actually come in and tweak the bump settings directly from the image bump map. So I'm gonna tweak it down maybe to 0.5. So again, as I play with this, it actually instantly renders on the screen so I see what I'm getting. I wanna bump up the density, so I'm gonna use five instead of two and a half. So now it's getting a, a, a you know, a denser, uh, the density is, is much tighter in this. And that looks pretty good as far as material goes. Now, one thing I want to do as well here is that I want to present different colors. So I got this orange option, but I want to show maybe, um, you know, a few customers different colors and get their feel for, for it or, you know, show marketing. So I'm going to create my first configuration. So I'm going to call it orange. Um, and yeah, there's a typo. I got that. So let's uh, rename and type this correctly. Orange. Thank you. So that's my first configuration. Now I want to create another one that's going to be green. So with that, I'm going to select the side panel texture or appearance. I'm going to duplicate it. So I'm actually creating a copy. And in that copy, I'm going to change the color to whatever color I wish for. So let's bring it down in the greens, maybe something over here, something like that. I can obviously play with the uh, HSV or even RGB numbers directly to get the exact color I want. Once I'm happy with that, I'm going to apply this color to the side panel. Now, because I actually created a duplicate copy, so the the um, the surface finish is the same as my or original one, the roughness. So now I quickly created a orange and green configuration. Let's create another one real quick. Uh, actually, uh, let's base it off of the orange and let's call it charcoal. And again, I'm going to select my material, Control D on the keyboard to duplicate. 
there it is let's just bring that into the dark gray like this and apply to both of these panels so again now i now i have a orange green and charcoal color now i want to render all of these images uh, i could render them manually one by one but one thing that allows uh, that visualize professional allows me to do is that i can actually render those into a queue the first thing i do is define my profile so i'm going to use a normal quality profile that's you know the file format is going to be jpeg and i'm going to say i want to render all my configurations and set my resolution, my render settings, and then this option, send to queue, that's what I'm going to do. So rather than rendering it, uh, doing the final render right now and basically tying up my computer, I send, I'm send. i sending my renderings all into a queue that I can start when I don't need the computer anymore. So I could start it over lunch hour, I could start it this evening after work and let it render all night long if I have a lot of work to do. But basically it's sending this to my queue and that's my jobs that needs that are queued up right now that will start at the end of this presentation. So really quickly, um, this, these are actual, the actual outputs. I've rendered them prior to the session. Uh, so you see my orange uh, render. Uh, this one is my green, a little different shade of green, um, but this one is my charcoal. Now the ability with you know, visualize is really, uh, what's fun is that you can try multiple uh, designs very quickly, try multiple colors, different textures, and you can experiment, experiment with the finishes very easily. Now the next thing I wanna do is get into, uh, you know, getting a, a better looking shot. Uh, with uh, we're going to work with the scene the lighting the cameras and you really want to capture a better vision for our product so let's get back into visualize and do some work with uh, scenes lightings uh, even some post-processing options that we can look at so the first thing i want to do here is that i have what we call our cameras and in our cameras i want to do a couple things so first of all i want to change my my studio appearance or my environment. Now, right now, I, you know, this is my default environment. I, if you have some already set up in SOLIDWORKS, you can bring those in. But like the appearances and the materials, we have a, a vast library of existing environments you can pick and choose from. So here are just a few I have. Again, going on the cloud library, those are the local. Going on the cloud library, you get access to a, a number more uh, different appearances or environments, I should say. Now, the one I wanna use here is a typical studio environment. Um, so I'm gonna simply drag this in. As I do this, I can now go in and play with that environment. So maybe I wanna tweak the brightness a little bit up. So I'm gonna bump the brightness to two, uh, so you see now it's a much brighter shot. Uh, my floor reflection, as I zoom in and over here, you see that I don't have any reflection on the floor. Now I can bump that reflection way up like this, for example. So now I got a very shiny floor. If I bump the floor roughness, you know, I still have reflection on the floor, but it's a little faded out. So uh, you know, I think I can play with those and, and see how that goes. I think I'm gonna, just leave it as is, this looks like a really good shot. And also, I'm gonna start play, playing with my camera. So we set up the scenes, the lighting. Now with the camera, uh, one, that, one thing that is really nice is that we using some post-processing filters, you can now play with things that you would typically go into you know, Photoshop to do. Uh, so for example, I can tweak my, you know, add a, an effect, a sort of vignette effect. So you see now the shading around the um, around the images on the sides. So I can uh, you know start playing with those. I'm gonna darken darken it a little bit better. Uh, put the bring the light light lighten them up a little bit. And now that I have this 
setup, I want to create different shots, different camera shots. So that's going to be my default camera. Now I want to create some different shots. So again, Control D, I use that very often. I want to have a view here on my camera two that's coming from the top. Actually, not quite uh, you know perpendicular shot like this from the top, maybe a, at a bit of an angle. And the other thing that I want to do in this shot is have a point of focus, which I can do by enabling my depth of field. So I'm going to pick, I'm going to pick on the handle just like this. And then you can play if you're familiar with photography, you got focal distance, aperture, f-stop. So you can play with those settings. And here I have a nice uh, view or camera view focusing on my handle. See how the handle is in focus and the drip tray and the cup is kind of blurred out. I really like that. Now I want to do this exact same thing, but opposite. This time I want to have the drip tray in focus. I'm going to rename it to drip tray and pick my focus point. There we go. So very quickly, I'm able to create different shots. One that focuses on the drip tray and has everything else, you know, kind of out of out of feel or, or out of focus. And then this shot here. And I can play with this multiple times and then create, you know, all kinds of different shots. So maybe I want to have a close-up shot to this area here. So again, I can play with create all these shots and just create, you know, the shot I really want to have. So let's copy that, zoom over here, and call that my coffee shot. There you go. So really quickly now, I'm I've got all these different cameras. So this is my you know complete shot. I got one focusing on the handle. Again, every time I do some changes inside of Visualize, I'm rendering as I go. So I I have a really good idea of how this is going to look like when I do my final render. Now again, I'm happy with all those cameras. I want to render them, all those images. Very similar to what I've done before, I'm going to say that I want to render them, but this time say all my cameras. Again, I can play with my camera settings and all of that, send to queue, and have added. So basically now this job is going to be my second job sent into my queue when I'm ready to render all of these images. So again, some of the shots uh, I've created before before the session of this those images. This is a nice uh, final render of the handle, uh, right? Where you, we see the handle in focus and the opposite one, which is the drip tray showing down the bottom. Now you see the, uh, the handle is actually kind of blurred. Um, so you can create those shots really easily using cameras and you know depth of field, all that good information. So we're able to create some parallel cameras. So we have multiple cameras, different you know point of views, different shots, and we can also reduce the post processing because a lot of this can be done actually inside of Visualize rather than having to create an image, go into Photoshop and tweak it into Photoshop, you can actually do it right inside of Visualize. And really the idea is to communicate all this much, much faster. Now, so far we've talked about still images, but one thing that Visualize Professional can do is animations. Now there's two ways. You can actually set up your animations inside of SolidWorks, bring those animations inside of Visualize and do the final rendering inside of Visualize, or you can actually create animations inside of Visualize directly. And that's what we're going to do with this example. Uh, some simple animation we're going to create. So I'm gonna head back to Visualize and I'm going to create a new camera view that I'm going to name animation there we go and one thing i'm going to do toggling the t on the keyboard uh, brings up the timeline so if you're familiar with animation this is going to be very uh, familiar um, you know it's keyframing 
Uh, now, before, you know, as I'm doing this, I'm actually going to my preview rendering style. So I get, uh, so it's much easier to uh, move my components. And the one thing I want to start with is actually get my timeline to five seconds. So my animation is going to be five seconds. I'm going to select the pods right here. And I'm going to hit K on the keyboard to create a key for all of these pods. And now over at five, my five second mark over here, I'm going to simply move the pods out of the view, right? So just like this. So now I'm actually animating. So this seems to be, oh, there we go. So now I'm simply animating the pods through that timeline, right? So very quickly now, I could actually get to my rendering settings. So you see now those pods are going to animate going out of view, out of focus during five seconds. Now, the other thing I wanna do as well is play with my camera. So I want to also animate the camera. So at my set time zero, I'm gonna select my camera and say that this uh, camera is, that's my timeline for the camera that we see here. I'm going to move the keys to five seconds and then zoom into this area. All right. So very quickly, I got, I animated also not only the, the pods, but also everything, my camera. So you see now really quickly, I'm animating both the pods moving out of view and my camera zooming into my coffee machine over here. So, and as I'm doing this, I'm kind of toggling between the different rendering uh, selections. So I'm toggling between preview, fast and accurate. Um, so when you do animations, you just want to set up the animation. You might want to drop to a preview or even fast rendering mode. And if you want to have a better idea, you can actually toggle, toggle it back to accurate now as you expect though this as i move my timeline i can stop at different occasions or different points into my timeline and now it's rendering this at this at this uh setting uh, you know high quality setting now what's great about this again is that i can play it and i can also render it using the queue again so when I'm done with my rendering, I can switch to the animation tab. I'm gonna give it a name, obviously. Select the file format I wanna save it to. So MP4 is the uh, most common type. Now, when I create this animation, I wanna set my timeline. So obviously I wanna render the whole animation. And then I'm going to set how many frames per second I wanna have in this animation. And in the render option, that's where I'm going to set, you know, what is my resolution and how I'm going to render it on my computer. And again, send to queue. So I don't need to render it live all the time. Again, this is going to go to my queue that we just saw here in the, the third uh, item or job in the queue that I can start when I don't need the computer anymore. So again, just to show you some, uh, some outputs, this is the final animation of what I've just did on the screen. Now, what's great about Visualize is that you can also do, so this is a, you know, an animation I've created using my keyframe, but if you wanna do simple turntable type animation, this is actually built in. Uh, I don't need to create actually anything. It's already set up. Uh, it's basically like, you know, one push of a button and you get a turntable animation very, very quickly. But you can also go in and do other types of animation. So here's a good animation showing where you see the sun moving across the sky and you can actually see the shadows on that model moving around as the sun uh, sets down. So again, great types of animations that you can do to really to you know, bring your product to life and tell just a deeper story with it. Now, you know, Nowadays, you know, VR, you know, Google Cardboards, uh, you know, all those types of, uh, you know, is becoming more and more accessible. And we want to create, uh, you know, just not just something you can watch, 
like uh, like an image, a still image or an animation, but something you can interact with. And there's different ways you can do that, again, with SOLIDWORKS, uh, different types of images, interactive images, or also actual VR uh, type uh, output. So let's go ahead and uh, check this out. So going back into SOLIDWORKS, into Visualize, sorry, um, I'm going to hide my timeline and actually uh, create a duplicate copy of this um, of this one here and create that and say maybe uh, VR and simply name it VR. Now a couple of things we can do here in my camera settings is that we can start play with stereo. So if you want to, uh, for example, you want to um, to create content for Google Cardboard type. Uh, content so very easily we can do that so see this would be for your left and right uh, eye or uh, focus so you can set that up into a Google Cardboard um, if you have those uh, old uh, you know the first 3d movies you know where uh, where you had to put on a um, you know a blue and red uh, type sunglass so you can actually create those as well uh, right inside of Visualize. So you can actually output those right with Visualize. But another type of output we can do is actually uh, when I render it here is going to be a, uh, oops, sorry, a interactive image. So when we set up a interactive image, so basically we're gonna create a number of different um, renderings like a camera orbiting the model that now becomes interactive. So the only thing we need to do is set up the number of orbits, my start angle, the number of images per orbit, and the end angle. And then again, I send my resolution, how do I want to render that, and send this again to the queue. Um, the output is gonna look something like this. So let me bring that into, into view. So the output of a interactive image is actually an HTML. Now what's the beauty of this HTML, well, it opens up in any browser, so you can host it on your website very easily, but now I can actually move this model. So I'm the one moving the model around looking at this. So if you like to go on the internet and shop for material online store, you can actually take a model and spin it around. That's exactly what I'm doing and that's exactly what Visualize can do for you. So I got this uh, interactive image I can easily post on my website and basically look at this image you know, every which way I want. Now some more of interactive images we can do. Here's uh, another example I'd like to show you is really more of a VR type um, um, image. So, and that's actually hosted on YouTube. So it's already uh, set up to be, um, you know, on social media. And you'll notice I'm pausing it because when I play it, you can actually see the sun moving around in the cabin. But if I pause it, I can actually move around myself in the cabin. So I'm the one going around this cabin. So this is a, um, you know, a 360 video playing on YouTube, and I can actually play both the animation, the sun animation, and me looking around and moving around the interior cabin of this design. So really, I mean, there's just so, so much nice material with Visualize you can do, and, and really to get people to interact with the model and with the outputs is really uh, increases the, the likelihood of someone wanting that product and wanting to buy the product. Now, the last thing I want to do is start the, well, start the queue and, and, and let it run and let it render, uh, but also visualize, look at some of the, some, some results. Now, before I do that, I do want to talk about how do we update if something happens to the SOLIDWORKS model. Now remember my SOLIDWORKS model, this was my original SOLIDWORKS model. So what happens if there's a change here and I want to bring those changes into Visualize? Well, let's do a change. Um, so as you, as you notice, I got a different configuration for my side panels, 
one for with slots. So I'm going to change the dimples for the slot, and I'm going to do the same for the perforation. Um, change that for slots on my on my tray. I'm going to save that, and once I save that, I can go to visualize. And visualize knows that something happened to the original model. Now I could actually do the import manually and do it as I please. I have the option to actually monitor the native SOLIDWORKS file, so that's why I get the prompt. It asks me, do I want to re-import? Well, I'll say yes, right? So it's actually going back at the model, looking at the model, and there we go. So you see now, I have everything I've done is not lost. I've got all my cameras still there, but obviously with the updated model on it, right? So I can move and look at all of these different cameras uh, like this. Um, also, if I, I had different color option, remember? So my orange is still there, my green is still there, and my obviously charcoal is still there, but just with the different model uh, with but with the same material applied to them again i want to render all of this i sent prior to this i sent everything to the queue so let's say that now i'm you know breaking out for lunch which is you know going to happen in a couple minutes so i can now start the queue and let visualize render all of these images uh, while i'm away from my desk or one thing i could do as well is actually send those those rendering to a, another computer on my network and basically let another computer do the work. And just to give you some of the outputs, uh, you know, we, we, we went through the different color option. So the orange, the green, the charcoal, we then played with different camera angles. So these are just shots I've created of this same model. Uh, a little prior to the presentation. Here's a quick animation, right? So all of this, uh, you know, we can bring all of that information to life and just have great, great content delivered. So if we, you know, kind of wrap up things um, quick. So what we've what we've covered today, we we did a lot, I think. Um, you know, we we started by um, importing the SolidWorks assembly. Uh, in this case, an assembly could be a part, but we brought that into Visualize with the original color textures. Uh, but we applied, we played with those textures, and we applied some different textures that we, you know, to give it a better look. Uh, then we played with cameras. So, you know, we, had, you know, we played with, we had different color options like a catalog, but we also set up different camera angles with depth of field. Um, we created animations. Uh, I showed you a couple other types of animations we could create easily. You know, we create VR content, interactive images. All that material can be posted on social media and things like that, and your website, obviously. And then at the end, we did an update to the SOLIDWORKS model and started the, um, the queue to render everything out. So really, that's you know that's really SolidWorks Visualize. Now, there's a couple of things I didn't mention as I was doing it, but I want to highlight uh, some of the technology we introduced in Visualize 2018, actually last year, is the artificial intelligence denoiser. Really allows you to create images and animations like 10 times faster than prior. So you can actually see here the denoiser if it's on or off, and you can clearly see the quality is much, much, well, you get at a, a final output much faster. It's, it's order magnitude of 10, um, about. Um, that's part of uh, Visualize Standard. We saw how we can import material, but as materials, there's the online library that you have access to, but you can also use PBR material and NVIDIA MDL materials if you're familiar with those. And the beauty is that you can bring those materials and tweak it like you want. Um, you know, we have, a, like I mentioned, a massive uh, cloud library that you have access to. 
you can play with the cameras. I didn't do too much work with the cameras here, but I play a little bit with the lighting, but you can set up your own different types of cameras, angles of cameras, color of the, the lighting as well. Uh, you know, really complex scenes that looks really amazing. Wait, I talked a little bit about filters. Again, there's post-processing filters we can use inside the visualize. There are some presets. Uh, but there's also some customizable filters that allows you to create the final output without having to go into a third-party software uh, to do it. Something we added to Visualize Professional last year is a physics engine. So basically, you know, inside of SOLIDWORKS, you would model a stack of plates like the stack on the left. But to have a really realistic image, you want it to be a little, you know, kind of sh shaken up. So we actually have a shake option inside of Visualize where we can take objects and simply shuffle them so it looks more real. It doesn't look like it was put <laughs> on top of one another by, by, a, by a robot. Um, so great things like this. Um, you know, interior panoramas you can do uh, inside of Visualize as well as VR content. And you saw the interactive image. That was an example, depending if you're inside a room or looking at an object, uh, you kind of want to decide which one you want to use, but we, we can do both. We can animate. You saw that too, where we can animate the camera path around an object. You know, simple one click, you know, 360 degree spins or turntable. Again, that's built in SolidWorks Visualize Professional. Um, video decals. So here I'm rendering an animation and there's an animation playing on the screen as I'm rendering it. So again, a lot of things that we can do with Visualize, very advanced animation. And this one is probably one of the I like the best. There's actually a vehicle driving simulator inside of Visualize Professional where you can set up your suspension, direction, propulsion, and basically have the car drive around. Look at the suspension traveling. You know, you can actually, and this is coming out from you know game engines. Uh, so, so really nice type of of animations and renderings you can create and visualize. It's really awesome. So. I know I'm sold. I hope that uh, today you saw, you know, nice, nice information on it. Um, while Joel is coming back online, let me look at questions. I think I might have a few questions. Oh, so, so Gary, Gary has um, two questions. Uh, so uh, differences between Visualize Standard and Visualize Professional. Um, I'm gonna simply shoot you or put the um, the website um, quick here. Um, so if you go on SolidWorks.com and you go into products and visualization and scroll down to SolidWorks Visualize, a little down here you'll see Visualize Standard and Professional and you, if you hit compare features, um, that's where you'll see a lot of the differences. So Gary, I can send you that link if you want, or I can actually, uh, let me just paste it in, in the uh, reply comment and put it to all. Um, you know, some of the main differences between standard and pro, uh, so animations are going to be in professional, uh, configurations are going to be in professional. Any type of VR content is going into Visualize Professional. Uh, I mean, you can drill down through the list. There's quite a bit um, uh, in there. But for still images and textures, appearances, scenes, lights, cameras, decals, that's all in standard, in Visualize Standard. So there's, I mean, there's great value in Visualize Standard. Um, another question from Gary. Um, Video card required to take advantage advantage of denoiser. Uh, so we do have some specs. We recommend um, NVIDIA cards, and I can give you some uh, some details about that. We're actually expanding to support AMD cards as well um, going into 2020. Um, so uh, a question from Mike, can you create a copy of a visualized file and then change the SOLIDWORKS model that's referenced? Huh, that's a good question, Mike. I'll have I'll have to think about that one. I don't have an answer for you right now. <laughs> I'll come <laughs> back to you. <laughs> so but that makes um, sense. So you can keep your setup and uh, and and 
change the product that's within it. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. It, to it makes totally sense. Uh, total sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'll just I have to put something in, thought into it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll think about that. Otherwise All right. We'll put a request in for it to be added. <laughs> All right. Great information. Any other questions, Michelle, or was that it? No, that's uh, that's pretty much it. That was it. All right. So great information. I am sold. I want the plane. I want a whole bunch of the things that you showed. But uh, the the idea coming back to uh, where I started was that uh, your first impression with a lot of your customers, your suppliers, whoever it may be, um, is is possibly very much a visual. Uh, and uh, whether it be your website, your proposals, uh, whatever it is that you're uh, sharing with people, um, it needs to be the best quality it can. So please be sure to uh, to take advantage of uh, of what's there. So once again, to repeat, if you have a SolidWorks professional or a SolidWorks premium license on subscription, uh, this includes a seat of visualized standard. Uh, it can be installed on someone else's computer as well. So if you're not the one who does these things, or if you've got a marketing department who would be better suited to using this, then uh, you're free to share that with them. It's a separate install. It can be a and it's a separate uh, license serial number that you need to uh, to install the visualized standard. So be sure to contact your reseller. If, uh, if you don't have that number and you don't have it installed and, and you would like to um, and, uh, and see what happens there. So uh, we thank you for your time. If you want to share this with these other people, if, uh, if you're not the right one who was on this call, please share the link with, uh, with others in your company. Uh, view it again if, uh, if you want. Uh, the options are there for you. Uh, there's the SolidWorks website, as Michelle showed. There's also my SolidWorks that has some, uh, some quick uh, tutorials on how to with Visualize. So uh, tap into those resources. And of course, your reseller um, for training or anything else, uh, coaching that you may need uh, on, uh, on this type of uh, software. So uh, we saw a quick preview two seconds ago. We'll go back to it. Our next webinar next month is on inspection. So how to automate the creation of the documentation that's needed for inspection um, and possibly also automate uh, filling in the information as you're doing uh, your inspection testing. So, uh, so please register for that if, uh, if, uh, if you want to, if you have not already. And uh, with that, uh, thanks again, Michelle, for all that great information. Thanks for everyone for joining us and have a great weekend. Bye for now. Thank you.